Chapter 25 The Header Moroni continues his abridgment of the vision of the brother of Jared concerning the early kingdoms of the world. The Egyptian nation is introduced. The city of Enoch is described and the great flood is discussed. The purpose for the written history of the nations of the earth is expounded on. 1. And now I will return once again to the words of the brother of Jared concerning those of the children of Adam who began to establish kingdoms and nations among them. 2. And it came to pass that those of the children of Adam who stayed behind in the land that bordered on the great river, even that great river that Adam and those that followed him encountered in this new world, and these begin to divide themselves up into areas according to their individual families. 3. And these families sought out the most fertile parts of the land where they could plant their seeds and raise their food. And they began to cultivate the land that was fertile in such a way that they began to raise much more food than was necessary for their daily sustenance. 4. And they began to take the water from this great river and dig canals and ditches wherein it would flow into places that there had not been water before and in this way did they increase the harvest of their crops. 5. And this work was done by many families in cooperation with each other, having elected one to oversee the construction of their canals and their waterways and their dams, for the people felt that it was better that one man should have the authority over many in order to eliminate contention and disputations among them. 6. And in this way these people began to form their governments and elect their leaders from among their own families. 7. And it came to pass that these leaders became wealthy, and they did not work by the sweat of their brow, but required a payment for their services. And because of their positions, which had been given unto them by the people, these leaders began to develop schemes and plans whereby they could control more of the daily activities of the people than the activities that they had been elected to perform. 8. And it was a benefit to the families that they had established among them to choose these men to whom they gave this power and authority from within their own families. 9. And in this way the children of men began again to allow Satan to exercise power over them. For according to the word of the Lord, a leader of the people should be the servant of all. And because they did not have the Holy Spirit to guide them, these peoples did not understand the principles and laws of heaven for the establishment of a righteous government. 10. And the only concern of the people was that they could feed their families and have shelter from the elements and have clothes to wear. And the majority of them spent their days providing for their own needs and also for the needs of those whom they had elected to have power over them. 11. Now, this was the thing that Satan desired, for he knew that if he could assure that the power and control over the people fell into the hands of a few men, then he could control the rest of the people by the power and the authority that these leaders had been given by the people. For this was an eternal law by which even Satan had to abide, even the law that giveth all the children of God the right to choose the leaders whom they would follow, and also the laws by which they would live. 12. And if Satan could convince the people to accept their leaders as chosen men of God, then he would have an even greater control over their hearts and their minds. And this was the desire of Satan from the beginning, even that he should maintain control over the hearts and minds of all the children of God, so that he could force them to obey the laws of heaven, without giving them the choice to do so by their own choosing. 13. And it came to pass that these leaders of the people, who were those who did not work with their own hands for their own support, began to introduce ideas to the rest of the people about the world and its creation, and its times and its seasons. 14. For behold, time is also something that Satan desired to give unto the children of men. For if they had a sense of time, then they would believe that there was a beginning of their lives, and if there was a beginning of their lives, then they would realize that there was also an end, and thus making the concept of eating, drinking, and making merry all the days of your life consistent with the cognitions that Satan intended for them. 15. 
And these lazy men began to look to the stars and to the moon and to the other planets in the heavens for the signs and symbols that they thought were necessary to keep the people under their submission. 16. And this great river of which I have written became known as the Nile River. And it came to pass that the people near the mouth of this great river, even that part that emptied into the great sea, became known as the people of the lower Egypt. And those in the southern part of the great river were known as the people of upper Egypt. 17. And there arose a mighty man among the people of upper Egypt, who became a king and a ruler among the people. And this man was not elected by the voice of all the people, but was given his power by the voice of the other leaders, who had for many years lived upon the spoils of those who tilled and watered the ground, and brought forth the fruit thereof. 18. And it came to pass that this great king united the peoples of the upper and lower Nile, and brought them under his rule, and he introduced unto them the idea that his family was of royal blood, and that only through the blood of his family could the ruling class be brought forth. 19. And this he had taken from the corrupt teachings that had been passed down among them regarding Adam and the pure blood of the bodies that the Father had given to Adam and Eve. 20. And now we can see how easy it is for a man to take a principle of righteousness and make it a principle that satisfieth his own selfish demands. 21. And because the people did not have the written word that Adam had caused to be written and carried forth among them, they did not have a correct interpretation of the truth. 22. And it came to pass that the numbers of these people grew exceedingly, and they were a delightsome and a fine-looking people, they having the remnants of the dark skin that had been passed down from those who had defiled themselves with the beings of a lower order that had crossed over into the land of Eden during the early days of Adam. But as their generations passed, and as these people mixed with the pure blood of Adam and Eve, they became an exceedingly beautiful people. 23. And it came to pass that the people were convinced that the doctrine of their king was correct, in that the ruling class consisted of special men and women who had been chosen by the gods to rule over them. 24. And among the people of Egypt, many forms of gods were created and taught unto them, and they worshipped these gods according to the abilities of each, in other words, according to what each of these gods contributed to their daily lives. 25. And the majority of the people were taught that these rulers were partly gods themselves, and that the gods had come down among them and established these few for the sake of the majority. 26. And because of their deception and manipulation of the people, these rulers became very rich and fared sumptuously off of the labours of the people who followed them and bowed down before them and they caused that great houses be built in their names, and they became the great pharaohs of the Egyptian nation. 27. And these pharaohs established a priesthood among them, and they called priests to administer in this priesthood, which priesthood served the ruling class and its needs and desires. 28. And the people were taught that the success of this life was based upon the material things of the world and they were divided into classes of three, the first being the ruling class, which consisted of the pharaohs, who were the few, and the next class among them consisted of the priests, and those who administrated the laws to the majority. 29. But the majority of the people were of the lower class, and this class of people did all the manual labour that was necessary to gain this worldliness for their pharaohs, who they worshipped as their gods. 30. And thus had Satan entered into their hearts, and with the treasures of the earth he began his reign of horror as he had promised. 31. And it came to pass that the Egyptians began to have some strife among the ruling class, and there began to be minor wars among them. 32. And there were other peoples upon the earth that were not of their land, and who did not believe as the Egyptians, but who were also under the great power and influence of Satan. 33. And great trade routes were established among the nations that existed upon the earth, 
And when one nation would hear of the contentions within another, this first nation would come quickly to that nation ripe with contention and make war with its people, that they might take its gold and its precious things and enslave its people, so that they would not have to work with their own hands. 34. And this was the purpose of all the leaders of the great nations that existed on the earth at this time. And this will also be the purpose of all the leaders of the nations of future generations of the children of men that shall be established after this time. 35. Nevertheless, in the early days of the history of the children of men, the sons of Adam tried hard all the days of their lives to live according to the principles of the gospel that had been given unto them. 36. But even among their own people, the lure of worldliness and the fine things of the world was too great, and their children began to succumb to the enticings of Satan. 37. And at this time, Enoch had established a city in the land of Canaan, in which lived the many generations of his children. 38. And they became an exceedingly righteous people, and they did not divide themselves into family units, nor did they have gold or silver or any fine things of the world among them. And they ate the fruit of the vine and of the ground, even those things that perpetuated themselves forever for their nourishment. And they ate no flesh, neither did they cook their food. 39. And they obeyed the commandments of God in all things. And the men of the city of Enoch were exceedingly righteous, each of them having only one wife, and concubines they had none, for there was no lasciviousness among them. 40. And their women were the most beautiful women upon the face of the earth, for Enoch and his posterity had maintained the pure blood that had been passed down to them from their father Seth, who was created in the exact likeness of his parents, Adam and Eve. 41. And they had all things in common among them, and they had a church established among them after the holy order of the Son of God. And the leaders of this church worked by the sweat of their own brow and took nothing from the people. 42. And there was no government set up among them, for all of their children were taught the commandments of God from the day of their birth. And because there was no desire among them to acquire or seek out material things, there was no need for laws to be established to govern the things of the world. 43. And the only laws among them were the laws and the commandments contained in the law of the gospel that had been given unto them by the mouth of Adam. 44. And there were no taxes, for there was no need for them, as all people shared in the responsibility of the needs of the city, and all gave according to their abilities, and received according to their needs. 45. And there did not exist, nor hath there ever existed, a people like unto them on the face of the earth. 46. And it came to pass that the other sons of Adam, who had corrupted themselves with the things of the world, began to desire the daughters of the city of Enoch because of their beauty and their grace. And they also desired to bring the men of the city of Enoch under subjection and make them pay taxes to the governors of their own cities and nations. 47. But these people had kept all of the commandments of God, and therefore the father was bound by the covenant that he had made with them. And because they had kept all of his commandments, yea, even every one of them, the Lord was bound by his word. 48. And it came to pass that the Lord sent Enoch out among the people that were not part of his city to preach repentance unto them in an attempt to turn their hearts back to God, so that they would not come into the city of Enoch and destroy it. 49. And the Lord did this that he might warn the other people of the earth of his indignation, if it so be that they would harm the people of the city of Enoch. 50. But even so, it came to pass that the wicked men came up into the borders of the city of Enoch. 51. And the faith of Enoch was exceedingly great. And when the enemies of his people came upon them, Enoch spoke the word of the Lord, and the earth trembled, and the mountains fled, even according to his command. And the rivers of water were turned out of their course by the cause of the great earthquakes that were commanded by the word of Enoch. 
52. And these great floods consumed the enemies of the city of Enoch, and the other peoples of the nations that were established in the other parts of the land felt the rumbling of the earth and heard the great noise of violence that was taking place in that part of the world. And they were all afraid and dared not to come up against Enoch and the people of his city. And the fear of the Lord was upon all nations of the earth. 53. And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Enoch and showed unto him many of the things that had been shown unto the brother of Jared and this because of his exceeding faith and righteousness before the Lord. 54. And it came to pass that according to the words of the brother of Jared, he saw that in the spirit world Jehovah was well aware of the city of Enoch and its righteousness. And Jehovah went unto the Father and described to him the things that were happening upon the earth. And he presented unto the Father the righteousness of Enoch and his people. 55. And it was because of this report from Jehovah that the Father sent some of his angels who had power over the elements of this world to watch over Enoch and do whatsoever Enoch would command. And these angels who were servants of God and were also exalted beings like unto the Father came down upon the earth in disguise. Yea, they made themselves appear as mortal men, even those who were the most despised among men, that they might not be recognized and discovered. 56. And these watched over the people of Enoch. And when Enoch made a command in the name of the Lord, these angels of God did that thing to the earth which he had commanded. 57. For behold, no mortal man had the body or the ability to exercise control over the elements of the earth. For this power resideth only in the knowledge and body of an exalted being. For this reason the Father sendeth angels unawares unto us, that they might do the will of the Father, according to the faith that the children of men have in him. 58. And these same angels were commanded by the Father to prepare the city of Enoch to be taken from among the people of the earth. For behold, the people of Enoch had passed through the days of their probation without sin, and they were ready to inherit the kingdoms of their happiness, which is their glory in the kingdom of the Father. 59. And because they had done all these things, the Father was not restricted in what he could do for them. And these angels caused a deep sleep to come upon all the inhabitants of the city of Enoch. And according to the words of the brother of Jared, they were taken up into the heavens. 60. And the brother of Jared wrote, saying, And I beheld columns of light coming down from the heavens upon the people who were fast asleep in the city of Enoch. And by the power of God, which is unknown by men, these were lifted out of their beds and out of their houses, and anywhere that they had fallen into a deep sleep by the commands of the angels of God. 61. And these angels caused this great sleep to come upon them by introducing a mixture of elements into the air that was in and around the city of Enoch. And all the people fell fast asleep by breathing this mixture of elements that was put into the air by the angels of God. 62. And these great columns of light were many, and were exceedingly great and wondrous. And upon these beams of light were all the people of the city of Enoch taken up into the heavens. 63. And they were taken to the planet on which our Father dwelleth. And they were still asleep as they rested in the kingdom of the Father. 64. And the eternal mothers of these spirits, and also the Father, went forth and touched each one. And as these eternal parents touched their spirit children, each awoke and glorified their mothers and the Father whom they immediately recognized, having had the veil removed from their minds by the touch of their mothers and some by the touch of the Father. 65. And the people of Enoch were accepted by the people who lived on the planet with the Father, and they could now understand all things that they had been taught as spirits by the Father, and also by their experiences during the days of their probation. 66. And many of their mortal relatives who had died were still in the spirit world upon the earth waiting for the day of their resurrection, but the people of Enoch resided with the Father. 67. 
And the father explained unto them that they would not be given a body of exalted flesh and bone at this time, because it was necessary that they one day return unto the earth and be presented to all the world as an example that it is possible to live in mortality and keep all of the commandments of God. 68. And now I, Moroni, would that ye should understand that there are many spirits who would want to believe that the plan of salvation that the Father presented unto us is unfair, in that it is impossible to keep all of the commandments that he hath given us. And for this reason the Father took the people of Enoch unto himself, and one day these shall return once again to the earth and show themselves unto the children of men. 69 and they shall show that they still have mortal bodies, and with these mortal bodies they shall keep all the commandments of God, and then shall the wicked see them, and know that it is possible to do all things whatsoever the Father hath given us to do, and then they shall have no excuse for their wickedness. 70. And it came to pass that the Lord caused the city of Enoch that was left behind, yea, even its buildings and all the things therein, to be buried in the depths of the sea. And when the other nations of the earth found that the great city of righteousness had vanished by the fierce power of the Lord, they began to invent all kinds of stories as to why this occurred, using many of these stories to keep the majority of the people subjected under the power and authority of their gods. 71. And it came to pass that the children of men became very wicked, and there were none who were found to be righteous, like unto the people of Enoch. Nevertheless the sons of Adam, even the fathers of Enoch, which were Seth, and Enos, and Canaan, and Mahalalil, and Jared, the father of Enoch, and Methuselah, the son of Enoch, yea, all these did remain upon the earth, that they might preach repentance unto the remainder of the children of men so that they might persuade them to establish righteousness upon earth. 72. And it came to pass that Seth died and was buried next to his father Adam in the land of Canaan. And shortly after the death of Seth, Lamech bore a son and called his name Noah. And it is this same Noah of which the record of the Jews maketh a recording. 73. And for the sake of the room that will be needed for the other part of the history of the children of men, I do not make a full account of Noah and what transpired during the days of his probation. For ye have the record of the Jews, and that record is sufficient for the purposes of the Lord. 74. Nevertheless, the Lord hath commanded me that I should make mention of the account of the great flood that is recorded in this record. For behold, the great flood did not cover the entire earth, but only covered that land in which Noah and his sons dwelt. 75. For in that time the people of the land did not know the great vastness of the earth. And when this great flood came upon the land, they assumed that the entire earth was flooded. 76. And this thing was taught correctly by Noah and his sons. But because of the traditions and corrupt nature of the men who would make their own history according to their own foolishness, the truth regarding this flood was not recorded properly. 77. But as to the record of the Jews, there was no need for them to know anything else that transpired outside the realm of the land in which they lived, even the land of Canaan. 78. And it came to pass that after the great flood, the children of Noah once again began to populate the earth and mix their seed with the seed of other peoples who were not affected by the flood in the land of Noah. 79. For behold, the brother of Jared was not a direct descendant of Noah, but he and his brother Jared lived in the land east of the land of Canaan many years after the great flood had subsided off of that part of the earth. 80. And the time of the brother of Jared was about the time that this great king of Egypt began to unite the people of the lower and upper valleys of the Nile River. 81. And if ye read the book of the Jew, ye shall find many of the errors of those who recorded this history. 
For after the days of Noah, the record saith that the nations of the earth were divided by the families of the sons of Noah, saying, These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nation. But after this passage was written, the record then saith, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. 82. Now, how can the families of Shem be divided after their tongues? if it so be that the whole earth was of one language and one speech. 83. And there are many discrepancies in the record of the Jews, for the Jews are a proud people and would want that the whole world believe that all life came through them, and in a way they are correct in what they believe, for the Jews are the chosen people of God. 84. Nevertheless, they are not chosen because of their righteousness, nor are they the chosen people from whom came forth the rest of the peoples of the earth. But they are the ancestors of Jesus, the Christ, who shall come into the world from their loins, or in other words, from the generations of the Jews. 85. And in this way they are the chosen people, only in that their lineage is the lineage that was chosen by the Father from which to have his Son come forth according to the flesh. Nevertheless, the Father could have chosen any of the other peoples of the earth to be the chosen lineage of the Son of God. 86. But it was through the lineage of Abraham that the Lord promised, that through his loins shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, and the nations of the earth have been blessed by the Son of God being born into the Jewish lineage. 87. For behold, there are no people on the earth that are the chosen people of God. For the Father esteemeth all flesh as one, and is not a respecter of any people or of any person. For we are all his children, even all the nations of the earth. 88. And in this the Jews do err, because of the pride and the wickedness that is among them. For whosoever keepeth the commandments of God is his chosen people. 89. And the Jews do not keep the commandments of God, for they esteem themselves above the rest of the children of God, and therefore cannot be his chosen people. But from their lineage the earth was blessed by the birth of Christ, and the Jews have rejected Christ. Therefore how can they think that they are his chosen people, if it so be that they have rejected him and keep not his commandments? 90. And in their pride, the Jews shall be condemned and allowed to be persecuted by the rest of the nations of the earth, because of this exceeding pride, believing that they are a chosen people above all others. 91. And it came to pass that the sons of Noah travelled to the east to the land of Shinar, and dwelt there. For the sons of Noah had dwelt in the land west of the land of Shinar. 92. And because the king of Egypt had made his proclamation of uniting the kingdoms of Egypt, it was voiced throughout the other nations of the earth that he might gain power over the whole earth. 93. And there were great warriors that had developed in the eastern part of the land, which came forth to go up into that part of the land in which it had been voiced that the Egyptians were uniting themselves. And these warriors joined with the people who had fled the land of Canaan after the great flood. 94. For most of the people in the land of Canaan were destroyed by the flood according to the record of the Jews. And the posterity of Noah was afraid that the floods would come again upon that part of the earth. So they fled eastward towards the valleys that surrounded the other great rivers in the land that would be called Mesopotamia, or in other words, the land between the rivers. 95. And in the land of Shinar, which it was called at this time, according to the record of the Jews, the people united with the great warriors from the east. 96. Now, the intent of the posterity of Noah was to build a city that could not be affected by any flood that might be sent up again upon the earth. And they began the foundation of a great city, even the city of Babel, that is mentioned in the record of the Jews. 97. And the people were taught in one language, which was the language that Noah had spoken, even the Adamic tongue that had been passed down from generation to generation, from the time of Adam. 98. 
And because much of the pure language had been corrupted by men because of the lack of the written word, which most did not have among them, the posterity of Noah caused that all of their children should be taught once again this true form of language, so that they could communicate one with another and build this great city that would never again be consumed by the floods of the earth. 99. And when the Lord saw that which they would do, even that they would not submit to his will and obey his commandments, but believe that in and of themselves they could supersede the will of God by the works of their own hands. Yea, the Lord did not allow them to gather themselves together and preserve the pure language among them. 100. And the great warriors from the east could not learn the language that the posterity of Noah had attempted to teach unto them. And because they could not learn the language of Adam, they became frustrated with the people of Babel, and began to destroy them and bring them under bondage, even before they had a chance to build up the great city that they had intended to build up among them. 101. And they took many of the people of Babel as slaves and servants for themselves, and caused these slaves and these servants to be taught in their own language, which was a corrupted form of the pure language which the ancestors of these warriors had spoken. 102. For when the sons of Adam had come into this land during the days of Adam, then did the whole earth speak the same language. But many of his posterity went into different parts of the land and did not carry with them the language that Adam had caused to be written for the purpose of preserving the words of God, which were given in the pure Adamic tongue from the beginning. 103. For Adam had caused these words to be written upon clay tablets, and subscribed with tools that created the symbols for the words that he taught unto his children. And they also used the skins of animals to write these symbols thereupon. Nevertheless, the skins of animals did not last like unto the tablets made of clay, and therefore over time they were destroyed. 104. And the tablets of clay were given unto those who would carry the record forth with them, and teach the things written thereon unto their children. And the ancestors of the brother of Jared had these clay tablets among them. 105. And their ancestors had spread forth upon the land, and were not affected by the floods that destroyed the people in the land of Canaan. But the incident of the great flood was taught unto them by their fathers. For their fathers were familiar with Noah, he being a great one among them who had preserved the pure blood of Adam through his seed. 106. And the ancestors of the brother of Jared had also preserved the pure blood of Adam among them. And at the time of the brother of Jared, he and his brother Jared, and their friends, and their families, were the only ones upon the face of the whole earth who still had the pure blood of Adam, which was undefiled. For the posterity of Noah had mixed their blood with the other peoples of the earth after the great flood. 107. And the brother of Jared came up into the land of Shinar to help build the city. And his intention in helping building the city was not to escape the judgments of God, but to build a city like unto the city of Enoch. But when he could see that the others who had come over from the land of Canaan, even the posterity of Noah, did not have the same intention as he had, the brother of Jared sought out the Lord and what he should do, so that he and his brother and their friends might not have their language corrupted under the subjection of the warriors from the east. 108. And the Lord commanded the brother of Jared to flee the land, and because of his righteousness, and also to preserve the pure blood of Adam upon the earth. The Lord led the brother of Jared to the land of Eden, which was the land of promise that the Lord had covenanted to give to them that serve him and keep his commandments. 109. And before the brother of Jared arrived in the promised land, the Canaanites and the Benelites had all been destroyed, or the remnants of them had departed from the land to the isles of the seas, or to the frozen land northward. 110. And the rest of the history of the brother of Jared and his posterity is given in the record of my father, even the part of their history that the Lord commanded me to write concerning them. 111. 
And now I return once again to the history of the people of the earth, of which we do not have a recorded history, even a true history that hath not been defiled by the precepts and ignorance of men. 112. And the record which ye have of the Jews, even the Bible as ye call it, is not a perfect record, nevertheless it giveth a more accurate account of the nations that arose from the descendants of Noah than doth any other record that was caused to be written at that time by the children of men. 113. And the vision of the brother of Jared giveth a true and accurate account of all the peoples of the world. But there were numerous peoples and many nations upon the earth, some of these were great nations, which were the nations of the great empires that arose and conquered most of the children of men under the power of their dominions. 114. But there were other nations that were not great, yea, even smaller nations that were hidden from the knowledge of the greater nations by the hand of the Lord. For if there were a righteous people like unto Jared and his brother, then the Lord gave unto them commandments that they should leave the lands that they had been conquered by the great nations and controlled by the power of Satan, that he might lead them to a promised land where they could keep his commandments and have peace and harmony among them. 115. And the world soon became covered by many peoples, and even the smaller nations which were hidden from the dominions of the larger ones became corrupted in time, even so much that by the latter days all the nations and kingdoms of the world shall be wicked and under the power of Satan. 116. And the purpose of this record is to present unto you, even unto all those who are the elect who shall receive these things in righteousness, the history of many of these great nations, and also many of these smaller nations that were led from among the great ones. 117. And these histories that shall be given herein shall demonstrate to you the great patience and mercy that the Lord hath had with the children of men. And they shall also show unto you the great wickedness of the children of men, and the ways that Satan useth to deceive those that give heed unto his enticings. 118. And when the children of men give heed unto his enticings, then he hath them encircled with his chains, which chains cause them to kill each other, and hate each other, and do all manner of evil to each other, until their nations are completely destroyed. 119. And after ye have read these things herein, ye shall know that which ye must do in order to prepare yourselves, and also the earth, for the coming of the Lord in all his glory. 120. And if ye prepare yourselves, ye shall be saved at the great and terrible day of the Lord. And if ye do not prepare yourselves, yea, if ye do not read these things that have been prepared for you, and learn what the Lord would have you learn, according to the power of the Holy Ghost, ye shall not be prepared in the day of the Lord, and ye shall join the wicked who shall weep and wail and gnash their teeth when the Lord revealeth their wickedness unto them. 121. Therefore I beseech you, even with all of my soul, that ye read these things carefully and ponder them in your hearts. Behold, live by the commandments of God, even by the words of Christ, in all things, and ye shall have the Holy Ghost to teach the truthfulness of these things unto you. End of chapter 25